there we go. Good evening, guys. How are you doing today? I am sorry about the long delay, guys. I had some problems with my connection. I have problems since yeah, yesterday, but I found I found another way so I can have a better connection, guys. So I hope that this doesn't happen again. So how are you doing today, guys? How is everything going? Oh. I'm tired, but I'm fine. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to you. I'm, I'm a little bit tired too, but I'm fine. Thank you for asking, Aleli. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Elvis. Good evening, Elvis. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, guys. I appreciate your uh, taking the time to be here again. Good evening, Erica. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Good evening Cesar. Erika, arreglaste el micrófono. Ya me escuchan. Sí, Dale. hoy sí. Okay. Hoy sí, Erika. Hoy sí, Erika. <laughs> con todo, con todos los poderes. <laughs> ok. Perfecto, muy bien, muy, muy, muy bien. Erika, se escucha perfecto el día de hoy. Ok. So, well, thank you, guys. I appreciate your patience. I'm sorry about the delay. So, well, uh, for today, we're going to continue with our session. We're going to, well, yesterday we finished with the present perfect. So we are not going to, uh, we're not going to work on that anymore. Well, maybe just a little bit, but today we're going to see a new topic. And I don't know if you guys have any questions at, at the moment. How is everything going when it comes to the platform, the online platform? Uh, website do you have any questions about that are you guys fine or do you have any questions about that no question no questions no question no. Vale, Lili, las, las preguntas que tenemos ayer acerca de, de las oraciones que hacíamos ah en el trabajo que nos puso hacer pero no sé si si hay que revisarlas Uh -huh. eh, que teníamos una, una inquietud. Okay. Hicimos una oración que decía, I have working in the English class. ¿Está correcta? Eh, vamos a ver. ¿Me lo pudiera repetir una vez más, Aleli, por favor? I have uh -huh. working. Bell connection. Yes. Sí. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know wow, teacher, no understand your audio. Le está fallando el inter. Give sí. me just a second, guys. Give me just a moment. Me I'm going to try something different. Mira, ayer no me escuchaban. O sea, Pero y si after que es la. No está bien. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué no estaba bien? Hi, teacher. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> welcome. No, teacher. No tiene el audio conectado, teacher. Perdón. Ok. There, there we okay. go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lady. I am really sorry about, about these guys. And, ok. I, I, I hope that this doesn't happen again. I don't know what is going on. Uh, today and also yesterday. I don't know if they are working here in the area or something like that because I am losing connection, especially during the night because during the day, everything is just fine. So that makes me really upset. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about bueno. that. Okay, so okay. you were saying something, Aleli. Uh, can you please uh, repeat it one more time? I have working after in the English class. So you have been working after the English class. Is that what you said? Yes. Is correct um, sentences? Have been working. Yes, I mean, you can say like that, and that is something, well, that is an example that many people, uh, many people have. Uh, okay. You are using the, the present perfect continuous. Okay, so basically you are talking about something that you have been doing or something that you have you have done okay it's it's a little bit different but basically it's the same thing but that's fine oh but teacher at the position the after uh, working 
working after or after working? It goes after after the, the verb, yes. It goes working okay. after. Okay, okay. And working um, include e and ing? ing, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay. All right, guys. So do you have any other questions before we continue? Any other questions for today? Anything that you would like to say? I was listening to your examples yesterday, and I want to say that you're doing a great job, guys. And well, today we're going to add more information so we can basically add more details about the message that we want to, uh, that we want to express. So today we are going to work on that. And also I wanted to say that, it, well, I want to thank you guys uh, for your patience with me. And also thank you for being here. I know that you probably uh, sometimes may be tired. So maybe you have other things to do. So I, I really want to thank you for that. So, okay. So we're going to start for today. I would like to share the presentation with you guys. So please bear with me. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. Aquí vamos, guys. Esto pues va a ser como una especie de repaso rapidito, ¿ok? Solamente para que podamos aclarar todas las dudas. El presente perfecto ya lo vimos ayer, no lo vamos a ver ahora. Así que vamos a pasar a algo diferente. Ok, so today, guys, I would like to talk to you about the simple past tense, ¿ok? I, I understand that this is something that you guys probably learned in the previous classes, but I just want to, I just want to make sure that you guys don't have any any questions that you don't have any doubts about the topic so you can be experts okay on this so what is the simple past really quick the simple past tense is also known as the second form of the verb it is used to describe an action that has taken place in the past and was completed okay so when we're using the simple past we're talking about something that happened in the past in that situation that action ended in the past, ¿ok? Eh, a diferencia del presente perfecto, en este caso pues estamos hablando de algo que sucedió en el pasado y que finalizó. A diferencia del presente perfecto. Y también sucedió en un punto específico, ¿de acuerdo? Bueno, eh, por allí en la clase anterior alguien me estaba preguntando acerca de qué es lo que significa este verbo que creo que está en la plataforma. Entonces se los quería mencionar por si alguien lo ha visto y no sabe cuál es el significado, pues acá se los quería decir. Este verbo se utiliza principalmente, eh, bueno, es book, es como libro, como de libro, ¿verdad? Pero es un verbo en este caso, no es un nombre. Entonces este verbo se utiliza para hablar acerca de como reservaciones, eh, ya sea de un hotel o reservaciones eh, de una cita en algún lugar en específico. Entonces decimos que that something, for example, that the hotel is booked. Then we're saying that uh, el hotel ya está prácticamente lleno, que ya se hicieron todas las reservaciones. ¿De acuerdo? They book out. So I just wanted to say that, guys. That this is just a verb that somebody uh, brought up in the previous session. So I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, just in case that you have questions about that. Okay, so then uh, going back to the simple past, uh, we have an example here about the simple past. And as you can see, uh, this is the example. It says, I went to the market to buy some groceries. So we're talking about something that happened in the past and it doesn't have a connection to the present, okay? Started in the past and also ended in the past, okay? Entonces estamos hablando de algo que hicimos en el pasado y que terminó. En este caso de que yo fui al, uh, en este caso al, al mercado a comprar algunas, eh, algunas comestibles, algunos comestibles, ¿de acuerdo? Vamos a ver la estructura. Vamos a ver también cuándo lo vamos a utilizar. Ok, what is the usage of the simple past? We can use the simple past for these uh, three situations. Actions that started and ended in the past. Okay, something that happened at a specific point in time. And also, guys, we can also use the simple past to talk about something that happened in the past uh, multiple times. 
Okay, so I have an example here for you. It says, I went to the gym almost every day last month. Ok, vamos a usar también el pasado simple en algunas ocasiones para re referirnos a situaciones que sucedieron en el pasado y que se repitieron, como en este caso. Estamos hablando de, yo fui al gimnasio casi todos los días, el mes pasado. Entonces, para, para hablar de ese tipo de cosas, utilizando el pasado simple, vamos a utilizar un indicador de frecuencia. Acá está, dice Frequency Indicator, like in this case, almost every day. Ok, eso nos va a ayudar a utilizar el pasado simple para hablar de cosas que sucedieron en el pasado y que se repitieron varias veces. ¿De acuerdo? All right, so any questions about these guys before we continue? Vamos a ver la estructura y luego vamos a ver más ejemplos para que podamos practicar. Like always, guys, we need to practice like we have been doing so you guys can... So you guys can improve, so you can be better at this, okay? <clears throat> so if you don't have any questions, then we're going to continue. Okay, I, okay, if you want to, I can leave it just a moment so you can write it down, just in case. Hmm. Hmm. Ok, entonces vamos a, vamos a continuar. Going to continue, guys. Ya les voy a mostrar algunos ejemplos de estas situaciones donde lo vamos a utilizar. ¿De acuerdo? All right, so we're going to continue. So we have the structure. Uh, this is the structure for affirmative sentences, okay? We use the following formula. We use the subject plus the simple past tense of the verb plus the complement or the object, what if, if there is an object, okay? Uh, en este caso, tengo esta, esta oración. Es una oración de la forma afirmativa. Okay, entonces, utilizando la fórmula, tenemos primero el sujeto, It can be a noun or it can be a pronoun. We have the, the subject, then we have the verb in the simple past tense. In this case, el pasado de forget is forgot, right? And then we have the, the complement. So the example is, I forgot to tell my supervisor about my schedule. Okay, yo olvidé decirle a mi supervisor acerca de mi horario. Eso es lo que estamos diciendo ahí. Ok, entonces la forma. Siempre vamos a tener en mente eso. I forgot to tell my supervisor about my schedule. Entonces esto sería de la forma afirmativa, guys. ¿Qué pasa si nosotros eh, vamos a, bueno, vamos a hacer otro ejemplo, lo ¿no? que los están anotando. Eh, he went to the mall Uh, yesterday or last month and you can add any time expression that you want you can specify the point when this happened okay you can say uh, he went to the mall yesterday he went to the mall uh, this morning this morning and you can add whatever you want to, okay? I'm just trying to give more examples. You can have more options. You can uh, say things that happened in the past, okay? Esto es para las oraciones afirmativas. Esta es la fórmula. Vamos entonces ahora eh, a ver cómo es las, afirma las oraciones de tipo negativas, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, las oraciones de tipo negativas son bastante similares. Lo único que vamos a hacer es que vamos a agregar, en este caso, el did not, or didn't, ok, did not or didn't, lo vamos a utilizar con todos, con todos los sujetos, no importa si es una eh, primera persona, si es una tercera persona, si es singular o plural, 
siempre vamos a utilizar lo mismo, ¿ok? Entonces va a ser el sujeto plus did, uh, did not or didn't plus the base form of the verb. Ok, en este caso, si ustedes se fijan, a pesar de que es eh, en pasado, eh, por el hecho de que tenemos acá did not and didn't, we are not going to change the verb. Ok, the verb is going to be in the base form. We're not going to make any changes to that. En este caso, entonces, tenemos la oración. El ejemplo. Esta parte de acá, el principio de la oración, no corresponde al, al pasado. Ok. Eh, acá, hasta acá. Hasta I don't think. Pero a partir de esta parte ya tenemos una oración que es del pasado simple. Entonces estamos utilizando esta estructura. They didn't buy. ¿ok? Si se fijan, el verbo está en la forma base. No está en pasado. ¿De acuerdo? So, they didn't buy tickets for the concert. Ok, so the, the entire, uh, the whole sentence, it says, I don't think they didn't buy tickets for the concert. Lo cual sería, yo no creo que ellos no compraron tickets para el concierto. ¿De acuerdo? Ok, so that would be for the negative sentences. Ok, guys. Simplemente vamos a agregar did not or didn't. Sin importar qué persona estemos hablando. Ok, any questions about the negative sentences, guys? No question. No question so far. Okay. Because we're going to practice. Okay. All right. So the next thing is uh, questions. Okay. So how do we make questions using the simple past? Uh, this is the formula. It is, uh, we just need to change the order. It's basically the same thing that we do when we have other uh, tense. Okay, basically we just change the order. Like in this case, uh, you want to say did plus the subject. Okay, lo vamos a cambiar. Aquí solamente vamos a colocar did al inicio de la oración para hacer una pregunta. Como mencionaba Brian en algunas ocasiones, eh, el día de ayer, como mencionaba Brian, en algunas ocasiones simplemente con la entonación nosotros eh, le damos el sentido a la oración de si es una pregunta o si es una afirmación. Pero en sentido más eh, formal, en sentido correcto, gramatical, tendríamos que hacerlo de esta forma. Colocar al principio este verbo que nos sirve como auxiliar. ¿De acuerdo? So, did you go to work yesterday? ¿Ok? Si se fijan en las preguntas también, por el hecho que tenemos acá, did, el verbo va en la forma base. ¿Ok? No lo vamos a cambiar. No vamos a decir, did you went. Eso no aplica. ¿Ok? El verbo tiene que ir en la forma base. So, did you go to work yesterday? Or, uh, Did you go to school yesterday? And we have different things that we can say. Or did you uh, go to the doctor yesterday? Or last month? It can be any time expression that you want. It. Like this. De acuerdo. Entonces, no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta hasta este momento, guys. Hay algo que les quería mostrar. Yo quería mostrarles, eh, bueno, es un video que ustedes ya, ya lo han visto, creo yo. Did you have a bicycle when, a bicycle when you were young? Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much for the example, Emerson. Emerson says, uh, did you have a bicycle, a bicycle when you were young? Very good. ¿Y cuál va a ser la respuesta en este caso? Eh, digamos, si nos hacen una pregunta de este tipo. Yes, yes, I, did. yes I did. Very good. ¿O cómo sería en negativo? A ver. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Very good. Así que esas serían las dos posibilidades que tenemos. Yes, I did. O no, I didn't.
Uh, teacher, short answers. That is correct, yes. Because in this case, uh, we, are, we are making a yes, no question in this case, okay? If you, if you want to get like a, a information, if you want to get a, a long answer, then you need to use a WH word. Like, where did you go? Allí ya no sería, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. En este caso ya sería información. Sería, I went uh, to the pharmacy to buy some medicine. Usando your WH question. WH word, yes. Okay. We're using a WH word. And the uh, answer is long. La respuesta es larga en este caso, correcto, porque nosotros okay. vamos a dar información en este caso. No va a ser sí o no, sino que va a ser información la que vamos a obtener. Ok, so that is the way that it works, guys. In this case, you have a WH question, then we are going to provide, in this case, information. And really important, you need to answer in the same tense, as you can see. The answer is in the simple past. Okay, I went to the pharmacy. Simple past, simple past. The same thing, okay? We need to keep that on mind. Entonces, ¿a dónde fuiste? Yo fui a la farmacia a comprar medicina. Or how did you, how did you come here? Or how did you get here? Me, es creo que es un poco mejor. ¿Cómo llegaste aquí? ¿Llegaste aquí por, por tren? ¿Llegaste aquí por eh, auto? ¿Cómo llegaste aquí? Eh, podemos decir, I, I, get, I got here by, uh, by car, por ejemplo. Entonces, yo llegué aquí por auto. Me vine en mi carro o alguien me trajo acá. Entonces acá tenemos unos ejemplos, ¿verdad? si ustedes ven, eh, se le va dando un poquito de forma. Podemos dar información y podemos también pedir información. Yes, I did. Okay, very good. Emerson, yes. Okay, so do you have any questions about these guys or no questions at this time? No questions, okay. So we're going to continue, guys. So then uh, what happens if we want to say, like if we want to say something that somebody else said? In that case, we're going to use this. Eh, ¿Qué pasa cuando nosotros queremos decir lo que alguien más ha dicho? Por ejemplo, digamos que Elvis me dice algo a mí, yo se lo quiero decir a alguien más. Pero él me dijo algo que hizo en el pasado. Entonces, es como cuando nosotros decimos, Elvis me dijo que él fue a la unión, por ejemplo. O él me dijo que él fue al, al pital, por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Cosas así. Entonces, vamos a usar esta estructura. Vamos a utilizar he said, as you can see, we're saying, we're using the verb in the past, ¿ok? When it comes to say, the simple past, it is said. Eh, se pronuncia como si solamente fuera así, como cuando tenemos said, ¿ok? So he said, he, he went to, let's say, the beach. Ok, entonces vamos a utilizar esta estructura. He said, he did something, like in this case, he went to the beach. Ok, eh, puede ser cualquier otra cosa. Eh, acá tenemos otro ejemplo. Eh, he said, he went to to work yesterday, ok, él dijo que él fue a trabajar el día de ayer, entonces estamos, es lo que se le llama reported speech, we are saying what somebody else eh, says, ok, like in this case, eh, what Elvis told me that he did in the past, y podemos utilizar diferentes ejemplos, verdad, diferentes eh, nombres, puede ser, eh, por ejemplo, ella o él o mi hermano 
o el nombre de la persona de la que estemos hablando. Entonces se puede cambiar. Por ejemplo, podemos poner acá. Elvis said he went to the beach last month. ¿Ok? Entonces simplemente esto es para eh, comunicar lo que otra persona nos dijo a nosotros. Que hizo en el pasado. Siempre es así. He said. Vamos a colocar pues siempre al principio. Uh -huh. eh, yo siempre me suelo confundir con, con tell. Uh -huh. En este caso no aplicaría a decir she told o he told. Eh, porque prácticamente quieren decir lo mismo, pero no, no sé si aquí se puede usar. Uh -huh. Sí, es, bueno, es una buena pregunta, Elvis. Eh, yo también me confundía al principio entre say y tell. Entonces say es como decir y tell es como contar. Entonces... Eh, para este tipo de situaciones, creo que vamos a utilizar say. Pero muy buena nice. pregunta. You're welcome. Thank you. Sí, eh, sí, a mí también me pasaba que yo, yo tenía como la duda que decía, bueno, say y tell básicamente dicen lo mismo. Porque son decir algo o en el caso de tell es contar algo. Pero sí, para este tipo de cosas, cuando estamos reportando lo que alguien dijo, Vamos a decir, he said that he did something. Like, he said... Y se, puede, he... y se puede aplicar, por ejemplo, a objetos. Por ejemplo, el periódico dijo. Y se puede... Se usa lo mismo. Uh, yes. Uh, but in that case, I think I, I would say something like this. Uh, they said in the newspaper that something... I don't know, something happened. Algo así. En ese caso lo diría más de esa forma, pero es bastante similar. Pero siempre se usa el say. Uh -huh. Siempre sería said. Okay. Uh -huh. Bueno, se lo voy a dejar ahí, por si lo quieren anotar. That... Se han dicho. O sea que dependiendo del sujeto que utilicemos, así va a ser el, la intro. He said, she said, uh -huh. they said. That is correct. Antes de, de la oración completa. Antes de la oración completa. Eso es correcto, Santiago. Ok, ok. Ok, entonces les quería comentar eso, guys, porque es como para hablar de cosas que sucedieron en el pasado. No directamente que nosotros hicimos, sino que lo que otra persona nos ha dicho que sucedió. Okay, entonces, no sé si quedamos claros con esa parte o si tienen preguntas. Fischer, una pregunta. Yes. ¿Y siempre se tienen que utilizar los dos verbos? Siempre se tienen que utilizar los dos verbos. En este caso, siempre va a ir esta parte de set y luego pues usted va a hablar de lo que sea que la acción haya sido. Por ejemplo, en este caso, que eh, esta persona fue. O en, esta, en el primer ejemplo, eh, la acción es que esta persona, esta mujer, tuvo un, la pasó bien, que la pasó bien en la fiesta. Entonces, siempre vamos a utilizar los dos verbos. Ok. Primero es solo para decir que él dijo, o ella dijo, o ella dice. Correcto. Y el otro verbo es ya dando la acción que la persona dice que hizo. Uh -huh. Correcto. Y ese ya no sería el mismo verbo siempre, sino que cambiaría, depende de lo que haya hecho la otra persona. Uh -huh. Es correcto. Muy bien, okay. César. Muy bien. Entonces es como que, digamos, César le pregunte a, digamos, a Elvis. Eh, so, what did you do last Saturday? Y Elvis le conteste. Well, I went to the, I went to the, uh, to the beach or I went to the mall. Uh, to buy uh, some groceries or some food uh, for my family. Entonces luego César me puede decir a mí. So he said that he went to the mall and he bought something or something like that. Así que de esa forma funciona. All right, thank you. You're welcome, César. Okay, so do you have any questions about these guys before we continue? Solamente vamos a ver una cosita más que les quería mostrar y después vamos a practicar. De acuerdo. Entonces, guys, vamos a...
vamos a revisar, es un video que ustedes ya creo que ya lo vieron, pero lo vamos a volver a ver, ¿ok? Vamos a reproducir rapidito para que podamos, eh, esto es Hi, en base everyone. a lo que vamos a trabajar. Give me just a second, guys. Still working on that. There we go. Vaya, entonces lo que vamos a hacer es lo siguiente. Vamos a ver el video, vamos a escuchar es acerca del presente perfecto y también el pasado simple. Ustedes ya, creo que ya lo vieron. Eh, lo vamos a revisar para que ustedes puedan practicar en base a esto. Vamos a ver cómo se, cómo se va dando el flujo de la conversación cuando nosotros pedimos información con el presente perfecto y cómo luego nosotros vamos a continuar utilizando el pasado simple. Así que vamos a ver eso. Se lo voy a compartir, guys. Really fast, really quick. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to talk about the kind of food that you've eaten and the restaurants that you've visited. You'll also learn how to express past experiences. For example, you'll be able to ask and answer the following question. Have you ever eaten exotic food? Before I present the structure that we'll learn in this class, I would like for you to listen to an audio program. This audio program illustrates how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully as I'll ask you questions about the audio program at the end. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Let me present the structure now. I would like to start by presenting this concept to you. The first thing is that we use the simple past for completed events at a definite time in the past. In other words, things that you did and have completed. And we use the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present time. In other words, events that you started in the past and those have continued to the present and they're not complete yet. Now, what we're going to learn in today's lesson is how the two are related. First of all, I may ask you a question, such as the one that you see on the example. Have you ever eaten snails? And your answer may be, yes, I have. And when you continue to give more information about your answer, you're going to use the simple past. And you're not going to use the present perfect to continue on given more information because typically what you want to do is you want to express an experience that you had last week about that particular question, right? Such as the example that we see there. Yes, I have. I tried them last month. And I want you to notice the question towards the bottom. It's no longer in the present perfect, but it is now in the simple past. And that's because we're asking questions about our um, past experience. We're no longer asking questions about um, if you've ever eaten snails. Now the question is related to uh, the example that you see there. I tried him last month. And the next questions will be related to that event. And so the answer to that is yes I did. And then you give more information. They were delicious. And so we do the same thing uh, towards the left, towards, towards the right side of the example of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? We start off the question using the present perfect, and then you continue on and, and you give either a positive or a negative answer. And then in this case, it happens to be a negative answer. No, I haven't. Um, and then you might give more information, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night, right? Um, and then the next questions that are followed here are in the simple past. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. Now that we understand the concept on how this topic is used, 
what I would like to do now is I would like to explain how to form questions using the present perfect. And, um, and so let me do that. At OK. So, de acuerdo, guys. Entonces, acá, lo que nos acaba de explicar, lo que nos acaba de explicar es cómo, básicamente, el flujo de la conversación, eh, bueno, empezamos preguntando utilizando el presente perfecto. Vamos a responder time, utilizando el mismo eh, tiempo del verbo. En este caso, si ustedes se fijan, dice, have you ever eaten snails? And the answer, it can be, yes, I have, or no, I haven't, like in this case. Okay, and what happens after that? Okay, once we answer using the present perfect, then if we want to add more information about that, we are going to do it using the simple past. Okay, so here is the connection between the present perfect and the simple past. Okay, so we answer using the present perfect, and after that, we give more information using the simple past, like in this case. Yes, I have. I tried them last month. Ok. Y luego, la siguiente pregunta y lo que va a continuar de la, de la conversación, si ustedes se fijan, ya es utilizando el presente simple. Como en este caso. Estamos preguntando acerca de esta respuesta, que es que yo los probé el mes pasado. Entonces, la pregunta que nos, que nos están haciendo a continuación es acerca de eso. ¿Te gustaron? Y nosotros podemos eh, contestar eh, utilizando otra vez el pasado simple. Yes, I did. I liked them. Ok. In this case, yes, I did. They were delicious. Ok. Si ustedes se fijan acá, también tenemos el, el pasado simple. El cual es el pasado simple de B. Ok. Si recordamos, el pasado de B es was or were. En este caso, como estamos hablando de they, el que corresponde sería where, ¿verdad? Pero si fuera I or it, in that case, it would be was. It was delicious or something like that, ¿ok? Entonces, eso le quería explicar. Eh, ¿Cómo va la conexión acá y cómo va como el flujo de la conversación? En este sentido, empezamos con el presente perfecto y a continuación ya vamos a empezar a hablar acerca de esa experiencia utilizando el pasado simple. Okay, vamos a escuchar es, un poco más, ¿de acuerdo? First of all, uh, we should learn the following concept, that we're going to use have. Have is an auxiliary verb. And we're going to use have whenever I talk about the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And then I will use has whenever I talk about the pronouns he, she, or it, or in other words, the third person, right? Um, And um, so having said this, what I would like to do now is I would like to present the structure on how to form those questions. So let me do that at this time. In order for us to form the questions, the first thing that we should include is an auxiliary have or has, as I mentioned, if we follow this rule, we learned that we're either going to use have if I talk about I, you, we, or they, and we use has whenever we talk about the third person. So in this case, um, we're going to use have, um, and then this follows the subject, then this follows the word ever, and then the verb in its past participle form, and then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever eaten snails? And by the way, um, this word here is a frequency adverb, so sometimes you can remove it. Um, and um, the question will still be correct, but in this case, we want to use it. Have you ever eaten snails? Um, and what I mentioned was that you can either answer this question with a positive response, such as, yes, I have, or this could be a negative response, such as, no, I haven't. And so just so that we can see clearly what's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the colors at this time. All right, there we go. So, have you ever eaten snails? And it's the same thing um, for our next question. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? So, let's do that one as well. So, I'm going to use have. This follows the subject. And then we're using the word ever. So, we use the verb to be in this case in the past participle form. And then whatever complement that exists. So, in this case, have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant?
And then once again, the answer to that particular question can be yes, I have or no, I haven't. And what I would like for you to notice now is how we respond to that kind of question, right? I mentioned that we can either have a positive response to that question, either yes, I have or no, I haven't. And then this next sentence, we're typically going to follow with a simple past statement. And the reason is because um, I'm going to talk about my experience in the past. So in this case, I'm going to say I tried them last month. So this statement here basically talks about that past experience that I had, which is related to this topic, right? So have you ever eaten snails? And my, my answer to that question is, yes, I have. I tried them last month. So I, I'm using the simple past. And um, now the next questions that you see there, which is what I mentioned earlier, are in the simple past. Did you like them? Now all the questions are related to this event that you see here, right? It's no longer this question that you're answering. You're answering the next question. I tried them last month. So you want more information about this event from last month. Did you like them? And as you can see the answer, yes, I did. They were delicious. And we can see the same example towards the right side of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Well, the answer to that question is no, I haven't. But I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. The next question that is asked here has to do with this answer. I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Oh, did you go alone? Um, this question refers to the person going to that Thai restaurant last night. And he answers, no, I went with some friends. So as you can see, we use a combination of both the present perfect and the simple past to talk about things that you either started in the past, continue to the present, and then when you want to go into talking about a past experience, that's when we use the simple past. Mm -mm. Okay, guys, so this is what we're going to do now. Okay, I want you guys to practice, so we're going to practice on this. Uh, there are some sentences here at the end, so we can practice. Okay, so we can practice using these uh, questions that we have, or you can ask whatever question that you guys want, okay? So I'm going to make the breakout rooms so you can practice. And we're going to practice using this, uh, this structure that we have, okay? We're going to start with the uh, present perfect, and then I want you guys to uh, continue using the simple past like this. Okay, we need to use the same structure that we have here. So do you have any question guys, before we do that? I, I just want you to practice for a couple of minutes before we go. I have one question, teacher. Mm -hmm. eh, por ejemplo, quería saber de qué manera se puede decir en inglés de una forma que yo pueda decir aproximadamente hace una semana o hace casi dos meses. O sea, hay una forma para mm -hmm. decir sin decir específicamente la semana pasada o el año pasado o hace cuatro meses, sino que decir hace cerca de, de dos meses, cerca de una semana, así, como para decir un aproximado. Sí, correcto. Ah, Muchas gracias, Jaime. Eh, sí, de hecho sí hay. Eh, podemos decir, por ejemplo, about a month ago. Ok, that would be aproximadamente hace un mes o cerca de un mes atrás. Or oh, you can say about a year ago or about a week ago. Es lo más común que vamos a escuchar. Que sucedió algo aproximadamente o cerca de un mes atrás, una semana atrás. Y también, este, pues si quiere decir que fue hace más de ese tiempo, si usted quiere decir, por ejemplo, hace más de un mes, por ejemplo, you can say over a month ago. Okay? Hace como más de un mes. Esa sería la otra, la otra opción. Over a week ago. Gracias. You're welcome, Jaime. Okay, any other question, guys, before we practice? We're going to practice just for a couple of minutes because it's almost time. 
So I want you guys to practice using the examples that we have. You can use whatever examples that you want to as well. But I will go ahead and do that right now. Okay, guys, we need to practice just for a moment. Okay, aquí vamos, guys. Vamos a practicar unos, unos minutos nada más antes de marcharnos. Teacher, y si ya no regresa de los break rooms, I no. see you tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that is going to happen. Don't worry. I, I don't think that is going to happen. Okay, okay. Okay, so here we go. Es por si acaso, see you the Monday. Uh, no, see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you on Monday, okay. Okay, here we go, guys. question with is Do I saw as my starting Perdón. Perdón. Perdón, no sé qué pasó. Ahí está. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You ever eat in high school? Hi, yes. teacher. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello, Marvin. Teacher, vamos a hacer oraciones con, con have you ever, ¿verdad? Utilizando la estructura que vimos en el video. Mm -hmm. Correcto. Así es, Fernando. Yes. Yes. Tengo una. Okay. Uh, have you ever, Marvin, have you ever eaten ice cream? Ice cream, ice mm -hmm. cream. Yes, I have. Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. Yes, I have. Sí, pero si yo he comido, quiero decir. Ajá. Yes, I have. I eaten. Okay. Ajá. Ice cream. Ajá. What is okay. your favorite? What is your favorite? That's ice cream. Ok. Morena, solamente, solamente un momento. Sí. Ajá. Ok, en este caso, eh, muy bien, Fernando. Eh, usted tiene que decir, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And then, after that, you can say, uh -huh. I, I ate ice cream, like, I last ate, week. I ate ice cream last week. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo. Perfect, teacher. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Thank you, teacher. Uh -huh. y, y la palabra este sabor que se escribe t a s t e cómo uh -huh. se pronuncia dicha eso sería taste taste, taste. entonces uh -huh. la debió haber sido la pregunta what is your favorite taste ice cream uh -huh. normalmente ¿verdad? normalmente Morena y esa es una buena uh -huh. pregunta porque hay otra palabra para referirse a eso específicamente a cómo sabe uh -huh. algo uh -huh. se tiene que decir what is your favorite uh -huh. flavor eso Fable. es lo que se usa. Ah, uh, uh -huh. flavor. 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 Es con como, e se lo puede escribir. F, con F. Ajá, Fable. esa. ¿Cómo se escribe? Se, se escribe. A, A, B, O. Se escribe así, se lo vamos a mandar. F-L-A-B-O-R. Ajá, F as in Frank, L as in Lima, A as in Alpha, B as in Victor, O, R, Flavor. Ah, ok. Flavor. Entonces, my favorite, uh -huh. my favorite flavor sería la respuesta, ¿verdad? My favorite flavor uh -huh. is pistacho. Pistacho, ok. Very good. Uh -huh. Yes. Have you ever been to a 
Pizza Hut restaurant. <laughs> yes, I have. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is uh, lasagna. Mm, it's delicious. Las delicious. Lasagna. I love it, uh, food, Italian food. Ah, okay. How about you, teacher? What is your favorite food? What is my favorite? In, in Pizza Hut. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> what is my favorite Pizza Hut food? Uh, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, to be honest with you, I haven't tried like too many different foods for them. I just tried mm -hmm. pizzas only. So I, I would say pizzas. Ah. Yes. <laughs> because I haven't okay. tried the lasagnas and I haven't tried uh, other things that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite uh, food in general, teacher? I would say that my favorite food is Mexican food. I really ah, like it. It's yes. delicious. <laughs> yeah, it is delicious. And you, Marvin? I love it. And you, Marvin? My favorite restaurant or my favorite food? Your favorite food? Uh, my favorite food is Italian. <laughs> Italian food. Mm -hmm. I love it. My favorite. Eh, ¿Puede decirnos lo que hizo el fin de semana? What do you do on weekend? Uh, I can hear. The microphone, not, not. How do you say no funciona, teacher? ¿Cómo? How do you say no funciona algo? It doesn't work, or yes, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The microphone of Gladys doesn't work. Yeah, it's, that's what it seems. It seems like Gladys, microphone, it uh, doesn't work. Yeah, no, no le escuchamos, Gladys. Ah, no se le escucha. Tiene, tiene abierto el micrófono, pero no le escuchamos. Quizás el micrófono no le funciona. Sí, a veces eso pasa con algunos auriculares. Mm -hmm. eh, hablábamos con Brian que el, el punto aquí en esto, teacher, es aprenderse los, los, los participios y los pasados, o sea, los, los verbos. ¿verdad? Correcto, sí. Eso es bastante importante y por eso estamos haciendo esto, para que ustedes, digamos, tengan más esa agilidad para poder hacerlo sin pensar tanto, ¿verdad? Porque a veces a uno como que no sabe ni qué palabra le está buscando en la cabeza y como que no le sale. Entonces, por eso hacemos esto. Yes. Eso es lo yeah. más difícil, dejar de pensar en español. ¿no? Dejar de pensar en español, correcto. <risa> Okay, so how are you guys doing? Do you have any questions? Do you have any examples yet? No question. I, um, we're talking about uh, activities on the past weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, Brian uh, uh, practice good. Brian, I have, been, I have been working uh, for four days. Tomorrow will be my five day, and, and even will be my last day in this week. I'm gonna work. Oh, okay. So you have been working for four days, and tomorrow is going to be the fifth. The fifth, okay. Fifth. Mm -hmm. The fifth day of work, and it's going to be the final day that you're going to work as well. Okay. Very good. So. How was your week? Uh, I mean, sorry. How was your day today, Brian? Was it good? Was it bad? Did you have a bad day or did you have a good day? I had a difficult day, but has been has been excited something, exciting something. Okay. Something. Okay, so it was exciting. Okay, very good. Nice. Nice. Muy bien, muy bien, guys. Entonces, eh, bueno, estamos intentando como hablar acerca de experiencias, ¿verdad? Entonces, 
casi que siempre es como acerca de qué cosas han probado, qué, qué lugares han visitado, o si ya han hecho, por ejemplo, eh, en, las, en la imagen que les mostré, había un ejemplo que decía si has conocido a una persona famosa. Entonces, ustedes pueden crear cualquier situación, aunque sea irreal, ¿verdad? Puede ser como que, yes, I, yes, I have, I met Messi uh, about two years ago. <laughs> I mean, that is almost impossible, but you can use things like that, just so we can practice. Yes, today, yes, today I, I saw the match to Barcelona versus <laughs> um, Manchester, no, Bayern Munich. Bayern. By uh -huh. uh -huh. and and I I enjoyed <laughs> enjoyed <laughs> the, the match. <laughs> so are you a Real Madrid fan or something yeah. like that? <laughs> so so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because if you are a Real Madrid fan or something like that, I think that you mm. you are really going to enjoy the match. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Uh, en realidad, ¿cómo se dice? Actually, 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 uh, actually my, my, my favorite uh, team uh -huh. is Boca Junior. Ah, I see. Okay. Yes, nice. it's my favorite team nice. of soccer. Okay, nice. And I think that Argentinian people, they, they are really crazy about football. They love it. I mean, they do crazy things just for that. It's a uh, very crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I I heard yes. that I heard that a couple of days ago actually somebody uh, got killed by the police in a match. I think that Gymnasia was playing or something like that. Yes. So they. I, I, yeah. So I, they say that. Actually, football is a really serious topic for them. It's like something that they really, they are really passionate about. Yes. Ah, uh, eh, the eh, lo máximo eh, the match is Boca Junior versus River Plate. <laughs> es demasiado. Parece es que la la locura. <laughs> la locura total. Es, es sí. el clásico más importante para ellos. <laughs> sí. Allí, este, en esos, en esos partidos, no cualquiera llega porque no. va decidido todo. Teacher, I have a question about yes. English. Mm -hmm. um, let me know if, if it's very important to change the sound while we are thinking, uh, such as uh, instead of, uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you mean, Brian? I I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. The native speaker uh, makes make a sound like this. Uh, um, um, when they when they are thinking, but oh, we are uh -huh. we are sound different. Yes, uh, like this. <laughs> uh, uh huh. Uh huh. I know what you mean. Yes, it's, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's important to change that song while we are trying to, to, to speak with those persons, those people. Yes, I think that it's important, uh, to be honest with you. I think it's important because, I mean, they pay attention to all those things. Like when you say, huh? Uh, they say that a lot, like, huh? Or oh, things like that. Okay, they have those sounds that basically it's like, part of the language for them. They have those expressions. So I know what you mean, Brian. And uh, yes. Teacher, uh, uh, do you know Bowel Schwa? No, I didn't know that. No, that, that is the first time that I heard that expression. Uh, I heard about that expression in YouTube. I see. Uh, there, uh, sometimes I, I, I use uh, YouTube to learn a few things about English. Okay. Very good. Very good, Brian. Well, thank you. I didn't know that. Thank you. Ok, so, bueno, vamos a hacer algo, guys. Creo que ya nos pasamos un poquito de la hora, así que vamos a terminar por el día de ahora. Así que vamos a cerrar los, los breakout rooms por ahora, ¿de acuerdo? Okay. 
Take care. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, Fifteen seconds. Oh, welcome, teacher. Ya no volvió, man. Okay. So, guys, eh, I just wanted to. Eso, teacher. Yeah, bravo. <laughs> Lo logró, teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Yes. Uh, so I just wanted to say. Uh, superada. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, guys, I just wanted to uh, say that, well, this is going to be it for today. I, I don't know if you have any questions before we go. No question. No question. Solo tenía una pequeña pregunta de que, por ejemplo, cuando uno quiere decir no recientemente, hay varias formas de decir eso, o, o cómo sería para decir. O no en los últimos días, no en los, no en los últimos años, por ejemplo. Eh, bueno, sí, hay bastantes formas de decirlo, de hecho, Jaime, pero si usted quiere decir no recientemente, usted puede decir not recently. Eso sería como lo más común, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Not, not okay. recently. recently. Not recently. Uh -huh. So that would be... Uh -huh. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so you don't have any other questions. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I think that we already... I mean, it's time to go. So I, I'm sorry about that. So thank you again, guys. And I will see you tomorrow, okay? See you tomorrow. See you okay, tomorrow. teacher. See you. Bye, guys. Good night, okay, guys. guys. Bye, bye. 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 See you on Monday. Hasta que se vaya el último. ¿Cómo es la cosa, Emerson? Sí.